Hey everyone, ready to dive into something that honestly like affects everything around us. I am. Today we are talking about science communication. And you definitely don't need to be like a scientist to get into this. We're going to be checking out this awesome lecture by Professor Andy Maya. Okay. It was at Salford University. And get this, it was for students who are just starting to learn about this whole science communication thing. Oh, cool. So it's like, what is science communication? Why does it matter? That kind of thing. Exactly. And Professor Maya, he really hits on something super important right off the bat. Right. Like he really emphasizes making scientific research accessible to everyone. Not just like the academics and researchers who are already in the know. Yeah. It's like he's saying, hey, science is for everyone. But he doesn't just leave it at that. He takes it a step further, delves into the how of it all, the scientific method. Ah, uh, the good old scientific method. He emphasizes that. Oh, yeah. He really hammered it home. Makes sense. It's not just about memorizing facts, right? It's about a way of thinking, a framework for understanding the world and how we fit into it. It's about asking why. It's about wanting evidence. It's about being like totally cool with being wrong sometimes. And honestly, that's useful for everything from like what you're buying at the store yeah. to the news you're reading. It's critical thinking in action. We'll definitely unpack how you can use those critical thinking muscles a little later. But um, first, Professor Mia brought up something kind of unsettling about this whole scientific method thing. Oh, what's that? It's something we all need to be aware of, really. He basically said that there's been like a, a dip, a noticeable decrease in trust in the scientific method over the last decade or so. Hmm. Yeah, when you put it like that, I can see it. We're bombarded with so much conflicting information these days, it's hard to know what to believe. It's like information overload is making us question everything, even like the very systems that are meant to help us understand the world. Right, it's overwhelming. Okay, okay, enough doom and gloom for now. Gotta lighten the mood. So get this. Professor Mia asked his students to rate their public speaking confidence on a scale of 1 to 10 right then and there on the first day. Oh, wow. On the spot. I can only imagine those deer in the headlights looks. But honestly, public speaking is scary for a lot of people, even scientists. I can totally see that. But what's great is that Professor Mia, he's been there. He knows the feeling and he reassures his students, you know, it, it's a skill you build over time. I love that practice makes progress. Exactly. And like he's living proof. He's so comfortable speaking to crowds, even at huge events like he, he actually shouted out the Manchester Science Festival. Which, by the way, Salford University is a major partner in, which I think really yeah. shows how committed they are to this whole science communication thing. It's not just happening in lecture halls. They're making it a real part of the community. Absolutely. And what better way than with a festival, right? Think, like, vibrant atmosphere, hands-on exhibits, talks. It's all designed to just get people, like, pumped about science. It sounds amazing. You even mentioned a student discount on tickets, so bonus points. But let's say, you know, festivals aren't, really your scene. Professor Mia highlighted another amazing opportunity for anyone who wants to dip their toes into science communication. Have you heard of FameLab? Yeah, FameLab is so cool. Okay, so paint me a picture. What is it? Imagine you've got three minutes on stage to explain a complex scientific concept. Whoa, and make it like understandable. It, exactly. You got to make it engaging and accessible for everyone. Three minutes to wow the crowd with science. That's like the ultimate elevator pitch. Right. Okay, so we've talked about how important science communication is and some really cool opportunities, but now I kind of want to shift gears and talk tech for a sec. Professor Mia introduced his students to this Google product called Notebook LM. Okay, I'm intrigued. So imagine this. You have an AI study buddy. Like, you feed it your notes and it turns them into a podcast. Wait, really? That's wild. That's Notebook LM. You feed it text and boom. Yeah. Two-person podcast. That's, wow. It makes you wonder. What other tools are out there that we don't even know about yet? It's like the future of studying, right? Right. And it speaks to something even bigger, too. Professor Mia's point about, you know, AI's growing role in this whole science communication thing. Yeah, it's not about replacing people. It's more like AI is giving us these new tools, you know? Yeah. To reach people we never could before. Totally. Like, imagine making science accessible to literally everyone, no matter where they are or what language they speak. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. Okay, but before we, like, totally go down the AI rabbit hole, I want to rewind for a sec. Professor Mia touched on something that really stuck with me, this whole citizen science thing. He was saying how crucial it is to involve everyday people 
in actual research. Yes. I love that he brought that up. And it's not just some theoretical idea. Right. He actually highlighted this really cool example, the Wildlife Trust. They've got these citizen science initiatives where anyone, literally anyone, can contribute to real world data. That's so cool. Like, think about it. That's you, me, our listeners. Out there walking the dog, you know, noticing what kind of birds are in the backyard. That could be citizen science in action. It's a win-win, yeah. right? You get to learn about science in this super hands-on way, and you're actually helping researchers at the same time. Totally. Okay, so we've been talking about how important science communication is, these exciting new tools, the opportunities out there. But Professor Maya also brought his students back down to earth a bit. Oh, how so? Well, he wanted to be upfront about expectations, you know, set them up for success. So he got into the nuts and bolts of the module assessment. Okay, so breaking down the syllabus, love that transparency. Right, no sugarcoating here. So what's the deal? How does it work? So the module mark, it's split. 85% is for the main project, and then there's this cool 15% that's all about getting involved outside of the classroom. Love that. It's not just about textbooks. It's about real-world skills. Exactly. So that 85%, that's a project report, right? <laughs> but with a twist. Yeah, there's a science communication element baked right in. Because of course there is. Makes total sense. Right, you're learning the ropes. Might as well put them to use. Practice what you preach. But okay, that other 15%. What's the secret sauce to acing that part? Well, Professor Mia had some very specific advice. He was like, LinkedIn, people, LinkedIn. Hmm. He really stressed how important it is to build a strong online presence. Which, let's be real, is crucial these days no matter what you do. Totally. It's like your digital handshake to the world. And he didn't just mention it in passing. He called it out as like essential for their professional development. He even dedicated a whole lab session later in the semester to LinkedIn mastery. So if I'm picturing this lecture hall right now, mm -hmm. I'm betting there were some students making mental notes to spruce up their profiles, like right then and there. Huh, yeah, pro. And good for them. It's never too early, right? Never too early, especially in a field like science communication, because it's all about connections, building relationships. Seriously, that LinkedIn connection could lead to an amazing collaboration or even a job opportunity down the line. You never know. So true. But he didn't stop at LinkedIn. Professor Mia was all about, like, dive in, connect with a wider science communication community. He even gave shout outs to a couple of amazing opportunities happening locally. Oh, like what? Well, first up, the Brilliant Festival in Liverpool. That's a pretty amazing name for a festival, gotta say. Right, and it's all about the future of education, like how technology is changing, how we learn. Super relevant for these aspiring science communicators. I totally see a class trip in their future. Right. Oh, and he also mentioned the Greater Manchester SciComm Network. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know that one. Tell me more. So it's all about like finding your people, building that support system. It's a chance to learn from each other's experiences, you know? Networking, but make it fun. Yes. Networking and community building. I love how Professor Mia really ties it all together, like the practical tips, but also the bigger picture of what science communication is all about. Mm -hmm. It's about giving those students the tools they need to actually go out and make a difference. And, <laughs> you know, no. it's kind of like he's saying, look, this is what the future of science communication can look like. Your generation, you're up. Take the reins. So powerful. So he's basically saying this lecture, this whole module, it's really just the jumping off point. right? Totally. Like get out there, experiment, find what works for you. Find your voice. Exactly. Because you don't need like a fancy degree or years of experience to make a difference. Nope. It's about passion. It's about finding ways to connect with people, share that excitement you have about science. Yes. Whether it's writing a blog post, recording a podcast, uh, making a video, or even just like chatting with your friends about a cool science fact you learned. Every conversation is an opportunity. You can spark curiosity, debunk a myth, help people see how amazing science really is. It's true. We can all be science ambassadors in our own way. 100%. So... As we wrap up our deep dive into Professor Maya's lecture, here's a little something to ponder. Yeah. How can you help bridge that gap between science and society? What gets you fired up about science? And how can you share that with the people around you? It all starts with curiosity. Keep asking questions. Never lose that sense of wonder. The world of science is massive. It's always changing. And it's up to all of us to keep the conversation going. Beautifully said. And on that note, we're wrapping up another deep dive. 
Until next time, stay curious, keep those conversations flowing, and we'll catch you on the flip side.